What time is it? I think I gotta do a review now. Ah, oh, this is what you get for partying on Friday the 13th. Ah, oh, oh, that'll stop the shakes. Oh, all right. Time for the review. Hey everyone, just woke up, had a long night. Um, yesterday was Friday the 13th, and so I took the opportunity to go watch a slasher flick. So what else did I watch? The only slasher flick available. I had already done it. So we're gonna do this. You kind of excuse me if I'm a little off. I have a headache. Um, after we saw it, we went out and we had fun because this movie was a lot of fun. So, <clears throat> with that, let's introduce the movie of the day. None other than the new, what's supposed to be horror movie for October. Um, ended up being nothing uh, more than a fun and actually pretty entertaining movie brought to us by the Blumhouse Pro, um, Production Studios which gave us stu such stuff as Split they gave us um, Get Out Earlier which is a really good movie they also gave, gave us the Purge movies which the last two were excellent in my opinion nothing more than Happy Death Day Now, Happy Death Day is a story about... <sighs> I woke up this late. Uh. All right. All right. Saw a movie yesterday. Let's go review it. Hey everyone. Anyway, um, hey everyone. Uh, today we're gonna be reviewing. Uh, this is the day after Friday the 13th, so we're gonna be doing a review for a slasher flick. I would have liked to have done it yesterday, but after the movie, you know, we partied a little bit way too much. But we're doing the new Bloomhouse production movie, which is a company that gave us such things as the. Uh, per franchise, they gave us Get Out, which is an excellent film that came out late earlier this year. They also gave us Split. They kind of they're hit and miss, but they're efficient companies. They usually give their their people a budget. They say don't go past this, and they usually make money their, their money back the first weekend. So, what movie am I talking about? None other than the latest supposedly horror flick. Happy Death Day. Now, Happy Death Day is... I feel like I've said this before. Anyway, Happy Death Day is the story about a uh, young woman who happens to, you know, wake up on her birthday in a... a dorm that's not her own and she has to take the walk of shame back to her fraternity and in that walk we find out a lot about her character and once we get to the dorm you know we find out she has to go to a party later she happens to 
while getting to the party, she happens to get killed by someone who's wearing a mask of a baby, which happens to be the um, logo for the school, which is supposed to be some preppy school. So from there, she wakes up and she happens to be reliving the same day again. What day is this? I didn't I start this review already? What the oh I'm not drinking again. Hey everyone, welcome. Why am I doing this intro again? Hmm. I think I've done this before. This is very weird. Anyway, uh, I think I was on uh, something like, um, wait, oh, I do have, s okay. Shot the intro. Shot the introduction to the story. And then when I talk about how it goes from there, that's where it seems that the review just reset itself. Alright, whatever, let's just continue with the movie. The show must go on, as Queen said. So, um, she wakes up the next day, which happens to be the previous day, the day of her birthday. She wakes up with the exact same setup. Um, she's in the guy's dorm. She has to take the walk of shame. She she starts to question when people start to repeat themselves and she figures out that alright whatever maybe I was having a severe case of deja vu even though she still is predicting what everyone is gonna do so fine you know she goes about her day she kinda questions what everyone's doing and everyone starts to question how does she know what they're gonna do so, what ends up happening is the same killer with the baby face mask kills her again. Now, after that, what we have is a. This is. The story is basically a ripoff of Groundhog Day, where you're reliving, reliving the same day of your life over and over again. They did it in Edge of Tomorrow as well. There was a movie that was released earlier this year. I didn't see it, so I won't comment on it. But, um, so that's basically the premise of the movie. She kind of has to find out what's going on and why is it happening. Now, for everyone who's going into this movie thinking it's a horror movie, it's not. It's not a horror movie. It's not a slasher movie. It is a comedy thing thriller I would say this is a movie that theme is f that tongue is firmly planted in cheek it's a lot of fun though I'm not gonna lie I really enjoyed this movie I didn't think I was um, I walked into the theater just because I knew it, was, it wasn't it's not a long movie it's an hour and 38 minutes so and it doesn't need to be longer there was no padding, there was nothing that I thought should have been cut out. Everything was perfectly paced. Um, and this is, even though it is in the realm of slasher flicks because of the setup, because the movie is PG, there's no blood. Or there's no, there's really no dripping of blood. People get stabbed, their knives taken out, knives maybe a little red stuff on it there's no blood uh, there's a person that gets shot a couple of times no blood comes out of them when they get pressed up against the wall and fall down there's no spear smear of blood um, things like that this is definitely a PG movie but this is a PG movie that actually has a lot of heart and for a slasher flick you kinda like the characters um, this is kind of one of the, the first movies I've ever seen in this genre 
because slasher flicks used to be a genre back in the 80s, maybe late 90s, like the screen stuff. I know what you did last summer, things like that. But this one, like, you actually cared about the characters. Um, um, and I really enjoyed that about this movie. I didn't, <clears throat> I never at any time, you know, was bored. I was never looking at my watch. This was thoroughly a lot of fun to, to sit through. Um, I didn't know what I, I, I kind of thought at first the enemy of this movie was going to be, it was a, it was pitched as a horror movie and instead we got a PG-13 movie that's not a horror movie, it's a comedy. I laughed a lot. This movie has a great sense of humor and all honesty. The character is a lot of fun. Once the main character picks up on what's going on is is a lot of fun and there's actually, a, you know, layers to the character and there is a story arc so from here let's get talking about the main character time for a review did I start this already? Whatever. Let's get this over. Hey. No, no, I know the introduction, the story, the setup, got it, how I felt about the movie. Alright. Let's just. What would be the next thing? Oh, the characters. Um, the main character, Tre uh, Tree, played by Jessica Raw, she carries this movie. She really does. She gives it her all. I don't know of many people who can carry a movie like this. You carry her story arc, you like her. Um, and she has a very big story arc, which is kind of weird for a slasher slash horror movie, supposedly. So it's kind of cool in that sense, but she really does carry it off. You know, when she's being mean at the beginning, you kind of dislike her. You know, her thinking she's going crazy comes off really well. And then at the end where she starts to figure out what's going wrong, that's pretty cool. Um, she really carries this movie. You know, Jessica, Jessica Roth, she, she really did well. Um, and I look forward to seeing her in another movie. Um, this movie is firmly based in comedy. This is obviously a takeoff of the Groundhog's Day movie. So if you like that movie, this is just the comedy in the same. I can feel a little bit of a backlash from certain people who are expecting a genuine horror movie. That's not it. This isn't it. A matter of fact, for the people who grew up in the 80s who were looking for a slasher flick, this isn't it either. Because it's PG-13, like I said before. Minimum blood, minimum action. Matter of fact, every time you see some something about to happen to her, that's usually when they cut away to her waking up the next day. It's not necessarily a bad thing because some of the transitions are cool and actually the idea of her, much like when Tom Cruise did in The Edge of Tomorrow, some of the way she dies was pretty inventive, pretty funny. With that being said, let's go on to what I didn't think worked in this movie. What I didn't think worked was, I think it should have had a little bit more gruesome in it. Other than that, um, this is a movie that firmly knew what it was. It is a satire, which I guess now Groundhog's Day movies are satire or is a genre, but it plays it well. It really does. I don't, if there's anything I really can say I didn't like about the movie, I couldn't tell you right now because I really enjoyed it thoroughly. It was, it was a lot of fun. You had characters you cared about. You had a pretty interesting premise, even though we have seen it before. And everything seemed to be clicking. I mean, you know, you can always nitpick and say, well, she would run out of the house one day. 
you know, straight out the house without doing all the extra stuff she did in the room, why is every, all the events happening at the same time? Whatever, if you want to complain about that, go ahead, nitpickers be, you know, ha do what you will. Hell, sometimes I can be a nitpicker. Um, other than that, it's a lot of fun. Um, I will say that some of the deaths were inventive. Um, some matter of fact, there's a couple of scenes, especially the there's a cup there's a montage in the middle where you see her, you know, after you see her die a couple of times, and you know, the first time she lives the day, the second time she finds this train that she remembers what's going to happen, the third time she just straight up goes batshit crazy and like, you know, tries to go do everything to avoid what the inevitable, but it still happens. Um, and then there's a montage where she, where she tries to figure out who the killer is, and you know, of course, she dies each time just to be respawn. I will say this: there is an interesting idea in the movie where not only does she die and come back, but they also come up with the idea that she is not a video game character. She cannot continuously respawn. There's an idea thrown in there that's saying that every time she respawns, whatever happened to her previously when she died actually still affects her now. And that's kind of an interesting idea, and they bring it up in the middle of the movie, but then it kind of gets lost at the end. Um, the main character, like I said, Ver Jessica is very charming as Tree. There's actually even an emotional scene in this movie. There's a scene where, I won't spoil the nitpicks about why it happens, where she visits her dad, um, who's waiting for her at luncheon, who's been waiting for her since the start of the movie, and every day she re she comes back alive, he doesn't, or she doesn't go to see him. And then they sit down and they have, she has a monologue, even though she's talking to another one, another person, the other person doesn't talk, the dad doesn't talk. She gives a monologue that's very heartfelt, and I find that kind of weird. And I was like, holy crap, that's character development. It may be a bit cheesy, it may be a little bit lame or foreseen. That's fine. But it, it, was, it was well earned in the, in the part of the story. I will say this, some people might have a problem with the main character at the beginning of the movie because she is a total bitch. But then again, so is her, 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 her whole sorority. So it didn't bother me as much, but you kind of did want her to die at the beginning. But at least by the end, she learned her lesson. I thought it was a sweet movie. I thought it was a well-produced movie. I thought it was actually even edited pretty well. I don't have any issues, you know. They're going away from the gore just to have her wake up. Worked pretty well, I have to say. Um, another bad thing I might say about the movie is the fact that um, if you think about the ending and when we find out what's happening it might not make a lot of sense also there's no explanation on why it's happening there's never a resolution for that so or why the repeat of the day other than for the grace of lord that's pretty much it <clears throat> um, but other than that it was a lot of fun you know, I'm probably going to see it again next week to take Jeff to see it. It's a PG-13 movie. We saw it anyway. Um, but it, but just in general, it was a good movie. And, you know, we need more of that. Um, final thoughts. If you're going into this looking for a slasher movie, you're not going to get it. It's, like I said, it's more of a comedy. I laughed a lot in this movie. I laughed pretty hard. And uh, I know a lot of people who went in there, and there were like a group of kids uh, behind me who I thought were going to ruin the movie because I thought it was a horror movie because it's being pitched as a horror movie. And they were pretty silent throughout the movie. I'm pretty sure they didn't like it because they wanted jump scares. There weren't too many jump scares. Um, the ending had a Dr. House moment where Tree goes, oh, oh, and I don't think any of it... Um, you know, not made sense, or some of it logically didn't line up. Um, there was a, like I said, there's a couple of sweet moments. I really enjoyed the main character. She really carried the movie. 
um, I would say I would definitely recommend this I am kind of apprehensive though because I'm afraid that much like in other horror movies when it comes out on blu-ray and DVD there's gonna be the unrated cut where you'll see all the blood and in all honesty I don't think it was necessary it's necessary in this movie so um, that's pretty much all the thoughts I have I thoroughly enjoyed this movie um, short movies not long doesn't overstay its welcome it doesn't drag it doesn't meander all it actually ends on a pretty funny joke I won't reveal what the joke is or anything about it but it ends one and as, there's actually a fake out ending that was pretty funny as well I, I when it happens there were a couple of groans in my audience but I, I actually was like what the hell and then it was a fake out ending you'll know it when you see it so that's it as for my score it is what the hell how is it the same day what the hell I know how to break this cycle. I have to finish this review. Alright, I already know what was said. So I should just be able to cut to the ending. And I can get rid of this day. Okay, I already know what happened. I remember it. Whether it's on videotape, doesn't matter. Um, here's my final score for this movie. Easily, this is a 7.8. It's not a horror movie. It's a lot of fun. Go out of your way to enjoy it. The main character is strong. There's actually a very, uh, there's actually a story arc for the main character. You actually even like the love interest or her friend, whatever you want to call that guy. She keeps waking up to. Very good movie. Um, like I said, if you were looking for the slasher flick, flick that they were. Um, advertising it as you're not gonna get that that's not this movie this is a movie that's a satire a thriller a comedy and I'm not gonna lie halfway through the movie I guessed who the killer was and at the end of the movie I was right and there is a red herring as in any uh, movie where you have to find out who the killer is I enjoyed it Hope everyone else goes out to see this. Uh, they're going to get their money back. This movie cost $4.5 million to make. They'll easily make that between today and tomorrow. And then whatever Sunday, they're gold. Um, that's all I have to say. And freaking hopefully I don't wake up again here. See you until next time.